Jesus. And I'm here today with my no shave, no haircut, stay home, stay safe, 2020 coronavirus, socially isolated look. I'm here today with Jack Pot, who's going to do the heavy lifting work. He's got the camera. We're going to take you on a tour of the back stairs and areas of our wonderful church building. Places you may have been to if you really like crawling around the bones of an old building. But maybe there will be some places that you haven't been to. We're going to have a look. For instance, have you seen the inside room where the big brother's window is located? And how do you get there anyway? We'll have a look. And I wonder if you've seen the view from the windows in the clock face. Yes, an opening and closing window at six o'clock in every face of the, of the clock. And so, take a look at this little pump out here. What do you suppose that pump out is for? The window. What's behind that window? Around the side, there's another little window. What's inside there? We're going to go in and have a look at that. And so here we are, standing on the sidewalk on Huntington Street. And the reason we're here right now is because when my family came to Asylum Hill in 1950, and I was a six-year-old boy, the church was almost completely surrounded by buildings. The apartment building you see down there was matched by others that came this way. The additions on the church had not yet been put on. So it was left next to the church and all those buildings it was a very small lot here for a few cars. On the other side of the church, similarly, apartment buildings encroached on that side. So there are no parking lots there either, except for a space along the chapel where you can now park. It's mostly handicapped these days. But for about 20, 25 cars on that side, people could park on the street. What most people did is they parked down Huntington Street on the other side, just this side of where you see that apartment building. There was a big open lot there. And we parked there, walked up the sidewalk, and in those days, most people, because they parked there, entered the church through this door, the west anteroom door. We're going to go in that way today, long unused, once again, to enter the church through the west anteroom. Here we are. We've come to church. The sanctuary is to my right. That's where my parents would have gone. The chancel is straight ahead. That's where Dr. Bernard Drew or one of his associates, the Reverend Dr. Frank Haggard or the Reverend Dale Griffin would have gone. To the left, as we all know, is the old assembly room which was renamed Drew Hall when uh, Bernard Drew retired in 1973. And here, through this door, is where I went. At that point, one of the older boys, on my way with the other kids to Sunday school. So this area here is used mostly for storage nowadays. This is the backstage of Drew Hall. This whole part of the church building is the oldest. It contains the original sanctuary, which we now call Drew Hall. In the basement, they include the old classrooms. We'll take a look at those. The heating plant, which heats this whole structure, is located there. So in two days, I complete my 76th year of life. And for an old guy, it's fun to be back here again in one of my favorite old places. These stairwells resounded with laughing kids when I was a boy 
going down to the Sunday school and coming up afterward. Real pleasure to get back on those stairs again. Remember those windows that I spoke of when we were out on the Huntington Street sidewalk? Well, here they are. So now you have the view from the old stairway going down to the Sunday School. Well, here we are in the basement. It's changed a great deal from the time I was a youth. These are the old classrooms. You can still see the designations on the door. This is classroom D. It's now used as a uh, gas heating. So here we are, we can come in and see it. This church used to be heated entirely with coal and then with fuel oil. And back when we had the fuel crises back in the mid 70s, we converted to a gas system, actually a hybrid system that used either gas or oil depending on the degree days. So this old classroom for the older boys and girls is no longer uh, in use, obviously, as a classroom, but I remember sitting down here. So next is classroom C. This is a larger classroom, and it's been repurposed as much of this area has been. So further down the hall, we duck in here to the right. It was a very interesting place. Come on in. The light in here is pretty low, but this old iron door holds some secrets. Okay, the lights are on. Now let this just swing behind us here and here we are in the very bowels of the church this is the area underneath the sanctuary that comes from here which is approximately nearing the chancel area we're going to walk all the way back to where the main doors of the church are above us of course Here, take a look at the very bearing walls of the structure itself and the supports for the pillars that bear the major load of the uh, structure and its roof. The pipes that carry the steam and the heat and the fire suppression system, electrical cabling, the infrastructure that keeps this church alive on Sunday morning. It's a low space. You have to watch your head. And we are walking on the very dirt of which the ground is made here. Just a very few old light bulbs hanging from the ceiling, more heating pipes, radiator systems, and we're right underneath the nave for the entry of the church. High above us here is that rose window above the big beautiful blue doors that we spoke of earlier on. That's where we're headed now. It's way up there, so let's go. I wanted to share two, quickly just two pictures of the church, which are basically from the 1870s, just to point out a couple things uh, on the building for you. And so you see this picture here of the church. This is from uh, 
again, this is from the 1870s. This is what the structure of the church would have looked like uh, from when, when it was built until the steeple was completed. Um, and you see the eastern edge here of what we know as Drew Hall. Um, I just want you to remember for a second what you're looking at here, this exposed brownstone up here, and then this little outside peak of the bump out, because uh, in, a, in a later video segment, that's going to uh, play an important role. Um, but then also, I wanted to look at, not that picture, this one. This is looking at this, looking at the church from the west side. And if you look over here on that, that bump out where the stairwell is on Drew Hall, the original construction, actually, there were no windows there, which I, well, I thought, I, for me, being a history geek, I thought that was really kind of cool. So now we're going to move to our, our second video segment, which is uh, the longest of the video segments. It's a, about a half an hour long. Um, so sit tight and enjoy. So the church is dark and I have been so enjoying the live streaming of the services. Maybe by the time this is coming to you, we'll be back in some kind of fashion. But for now, we're all still socially distancing. I'm enjoying those. The church is looking awfully quiet. It needs to be filled with people. We're going to head up these stairs right here now, and we're going to get up to the upper reaches here and look at some really interesting places. Here we go. So nothing terribly new right here. This is the stairway that the choir uses every Sunday. You see the array of choir ropes here. There's a door here right out onto the chancel, which is the choir loft, where you have a wonderful look. My favorite look out over the sanctuary. But here, to my left, is this wonderful little door. And this is where we are going. Here we are at a place where we not only look out a window from the inside, but if we turn around and look up behind here, we can see some of the serious architecture of this church. These are the buttresses, not flying buttresses like you might see in Europe, but buttresses nevertheless that are helping to stabilize and hold up the big bearing walls of this church. We're now standing essentially over the side aisle area. These are the big bearing walls of the church. In the early part of the 20th century, the pipe organ was moved from the front of the church in the chancel to the rear of the church. It's a huge instrument. Thousands of pipes, many ranks. It towers, as you can see, if you look up at it from the church. But it takes what had been the initial entrance to the steeple. So when they put that organ in the back, they had to cut a new way to get into the steeple. And if you look up there, you see the bricks dovetailed into the old brownstone of the main structure itself. That's where they cut the hole through. And that's where we're going now. Okay. This is an interesting little passageway here. A little bit thin on the shoulders. You have to kind of make your way through, squeeze your way, and then you come. And guess where we are now? Look at the windows out here. Look at this huge big space. Turning around, you see the very top of the organ equipment. 
huge stairway going way aloft with a trap door at the top, weighted down by lead in order to prevent the upswell of air from blowing the top off. Another thing to point out up here is this mechanism down here on the floor. This is for manually ringing the bell. It rings from the uh, clock striking the hours, but it can also be turned on to toll at any occasion that you want the bell to toll. This motor starts running, the gears start turning, these levers start dancing up and down. These cables go way, way up through the roof there to the belt clappers and kabong, kabong, kabong. Right now, we're gonna take a walk up this ladder behind me. This little ladder takes us all the way up to the catwalk above the sanctuary. Planks running across the very top of the church. A nice railing to hold on to because the ceiling is made with canvas. You don't want to fall through that. Up above, you can see the very peak of the church building and the massive timbers that support the roof. So I've come down off the catwalk, just a short step down, and I'm standing on the structure over the rosette. You may notice up in the ceiling of the church, there are two large rosettes with holes in them. Those have all been covered over for heat retention purposes with a lot of insulation. But in the old days, the church was cooled by opening those little half windows at the bottom of the side windows, the beautiful stained glass windows, and the heat of the air would rise up through those rosettes, whoosh into this space, whoosh out the back, and up into the bell tower. That's why the lead door, trap door is there to prevent that from happening, because that's a fire hazard uh, they discovered. And you'll see all kinds of fire alarm equipment up here. And once again, the beautiful structure. And then behind me, over the chancel, the beautiful Gabriel window, we're up above where that is located. Next, we're going to head up this long staircase here. Put that heavy door aside. I haven't done that for 20 years. I'm going to see if I have the strength to do it anymore. If not, Jack will get up there and do it. But above this is the bell. When we're up in the bell, you'll be able to look down at the street below. The air blows in. It's a wonderful experience up there. And that huge bell just sits there in all its might. Let's go. used to rock and there was a rope going all the way down to the floor and the bell ringer would pull it and you see that the guy going up and down pulling the rope. Nowadays though it's hung by clappers. Those two cables that I showed you when we were below, here they are attached to these clappers here that come back in and hit the surface of the bell. The clock on the other hand has a clapper over here, with a cable going up through the next two levels, reached from this ladder, and 
above that trap door up yet another ladder, continuously straight up to the uh, clock room. Here we are looking down into the bell chamber. You can see the wheel uh, of, of the bell. And this is up that skinny ladder that Russ talked about. And this is the room above the bell chamber. Very simple flooring. Single beam right here. One light bulb. And you see here is the cable coming up from the bell. Going all the way up to the next level where the clock room is, and that's where we're headed now. Up this ladder, pushing open that little hatch. Coming through that little hatch brings us into the clock room. And here we see the north face of the clock from the back side. You see the brownstone on the back of the clock face itself. And then there's a bar from each of the four windows that goes into this little room right in the middle of the chamber. So we're going to walk over to the door. And here is the door with a nice old fashioned latch and it says keep out. And inside this room we will find the clock mechanism itself. So here are the workings of the clock. From below it, you see the cable coming up. Those two different sections from the bell chamber and they connect to this and that connects up and above we see the four connections from the four different clock faces When these gears go, we turn the clock. three windows and two of those th three well actually no all three have names and dates written on them of people who have come up here some of them just for fun some of them to do maintenance on the clock and they date from last year 
all the way back to the early 20th century. Here from 1963, we have the lubrication instructions for the clock. If we move further in, we see this wonderful article about Charles Neal. who was in charge of this clock from 1916 to 1947. He was known as the clock doctor, and he was actually in charge of not just this clock, but the Keeney Tower, the old state house, center church, and uh, also the white church tower in East Hartford. A lot of people depended on him. can see the dates here, 1912, 1918, or 13, 1963. These are all just people who have come up and been a part of this. You can take a little shot here of the gears turning. And here is a stack of papers with a very modern looking binder clip, so we know it's relatively new. Those are certificates from when Russ Jones used to lead clock tower climbs. And I believe those certificates start in about 1987 and end around 2002. Remember that small window at six o'clock on the clock face? Well, here it is. And the window simply will slide to the side to open up. Here you can see Asylum Avenue going towards St. Francis Hospital. These two bars that you see, those are the handles that uh, whoever is changing the time in the fall and the spring, which in our case is our sexton, Jorge Fuentes, um, helps to uh, grab those to help move the clock hands. Here we can look down to the sidewalk where Russ and I were standing. You can see the beautiful view all the way over towards Avon Mountain. Here is the portico entrance from the courtyard into the church building. And this is the view out the six o'clock window from the clock tower. Of course, that is the top of the Traveler's Tower in downtown Hartford. And this is the view out the six o'clock window facing the city. We can look down on our parking lot and the main entrance off Asylum Avenue. Here we have the cross at the top of St. Joseph Cathedral. And this is the view of the six o'clock window facing 
south. You can see there is another ladder going up to another very skinny looking entryway and that is the small chamber above the clock room. We'll try to go there now. Here we are in the next level up looking down at the clock room there below and this little skinny ladder that comes all the way up. Tiny little hatch to push open. And fortunately there is a, a work light that you can bring up with you, which is a plugged in down in the clock room because there is no light bulb in here. So you bring that work light up with you, but this is the next level up above the clock room. It's getting a little more narrow. You can see there is sort of uh, the, the construction of the beams there and the, the floor of the next level with another little hatch. It's very dimly lit in here because of no light bulbs. There's a good look of the inside of the brownstone. So let's see what's up the next level. So that is the hatch we just came through into this two levels above the clock room. And it's even more narrow. And there are no windows. We see this ceiling up there for the next level, plus a ladder here. Sorry, it's a little blurry. And so we're thankful that that work light, which is tethered down into the clock room, goes up two levels. Otherwise, this would be completely dark in here. Although I do have a headlamp on so I can see. So we're going to go up one more level and I believe in that level there are little tiny windows. So now looking down the ladder we just came up and you can see the work light down there at the bottom. Sure enough in this smaller chamber there are eight of these little windows all the way around the room. And of course, another ladder going up to another small hatchway. These windows are open to the outside air with a screen to protect from birds coming inside. A little hard to see through them, but we're high enough up where you can sort of see the top of, well, maybe not there. That is the, the uh, back of St. Joseph Cathedral. It gets even more narrow as it goes up to that next level. These fantastic old beams all put in 
when the tower was completed. Let's see what's behind that hatch. As we come up through this last hatch, or what I thought was the last hatch, we come into another narrow room here. And not surprisingly, another ladder. But it looks like there's going to be some small windows up there. But there's this beautiful little small room. So that's looking down through the hatch we just came through, down into that smaller space that has the eight windows in it. And we're now inside an even smaller space. That goes up there. And that's where we're headed next. And that is the ladder. We just came up through a very small opening into a very small footprint. I brought an extra work light along with me. But you can see this is very small. There are, again, eight small panels here that are open to the air, save screening that's down there. It's kind of hard to get any look out there because of the there's only an opening on the tops of each of them. But if we pan up, we can see this is the underside of the top spire of the church tower and that big metal bolt which is holding on to the pineapple which is on top of the church yes you heard correctly I said pineapple Turn my headlamp off, turn this around, Let's see if you can see me here. Uh, it's a little, a little dark, sorry about that. Um, but uh, this has, oh there, get my work light. This has been your tour, uh, the, the Tower Climb Plus, I think we'll call it. Uh, virtual tour to the top of the church spire and I hope you enjoyed that we're gonna head back down and uh, finish with some other things as we're coming back down into the bell chamber I thought I would give you a bird's eye view of the top of the bell here you can see the two clappers there that are part of the mechanized way to turn on the clock and the bell, sorry, turn on the bell. Uh, but this gives you a really good view too of the big flywheel that is attached to the bell, which you can see these vertical two by fours, one on either side is now keeping that in place uh, so that nothing nothing rocks on the bell. But it's quite an impressive structure from on top here. If you take a look underneath the bell, you can see the old clapper, which is hanging from the center of the bell, when she rang, when she was pulled by a rope. Can you believe it? In this old church, there's an actual remnant of the old pull rope. How about this? For old time's sake. <coughs> so, Jack, 
is going to get a, an image of the inscription on the bell, V.C. in the White, East Hampton, Connecticut, 1871. Well, the wind is starting to pick up here. You may hear it in the microphone. It's getting quite breezy for the 7th of May. We're going to start heading down. is our back stairs tour. Remember the rose window above our big blue doors that I told you about? We're going to go to where you would have been able to see them many years ago. But remember the organ was moved from the front of the church to the back of the church. When that happened, the organ took all that space and there's a big plaster wall there. But here's a teaser. Jack Pudd is going to take us way deep into the back of the organ so you can see what that magnificent instrument looks like. We come up into the choir loft here, past all the choir's chairs, the organ console, looking up at the great instrument and its beautiful trumpet enchement, state trumpets aiming out in all their majesty. And here, which you might not notice, is actually the door into the organ. In a later segment, we're going to be giving you an organ demonstration and showing the full breadth of what this fantastic king of instruments can do. But uh, Russ is going to follow me into the back of the organ chamber on the main level, and we're going to take a look at that back wall. The passageway is very narrow, the steps are very skinny. And of course, as you're walking through, you never want to grab any pipes. You only want to grab wood, unless it's a wooden pipe. So here we have the very back of the organ chamber. You can see there is a set of wooden pipes back here. And actually on the back wall of the chamber is the complete computer system that our console now is attached to. And it's quite impressive. And the height of this if you look all the way up to the ceiling, there's a hardwood floor that you see the bottom side of. That is where we were standing with that staircase that goes up to the bell tower, bell chamber. But here we have the back wall of the sanctuary where the amazing rose window from the outside, however, you can see on the inside, it is just plaster. So we're going to end our, our tour today here. Um, and like I said, Susan and I will be putting together uh, an organ demo video to be able to share with everybody. And we'll have the camera back here as the organ is going on. You'll be able to see the wind chests moving. Um, it does get rather loud back here when the organ is, is at its full throttle. Um, but uh, for my money, this view from this spot right where I'm standing, where you have the front wall of the church behind these pipes, and then looking straight through all the way to the Gabriel window. It's quite a view, and not one that many people get to see. So we're gonna end with a, a shot of that.